Hey folks, welcome back. We are here for you again and bringing the coolest vibes of NBA for you all. The player and the teams he play on are a paradox, unfairly dismissed as a bridge between the two greatest eras in franchise history. And alternatively, lionized for one triumphant moment, a contest so thrilling that the league's marketing apparatus dubs Game 5 of the 1976 NBA Finals the greatest game ever played. To pigeonhole David Cowens in the 1917's Boston Celtics is to diss the very essence of the man who plays every possession as if it's his last. Cowens is a full-throttle post player with no off switch, which is a damn good thing, given that he follows the greatest deal closer the game has ever known. Let's move forward with our video and have a look at the top 10 things you didn't know about Dave Cowens. So, let's begin. But before we proceed further, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, do hit that subscribe button so that you won't be missing out on any future NBA content. Number 10. Birth and the Career Vibe David William Cowens was born on the 25th of October 1948, after starring in high school at Newport Catholic School in his hometown of Newport, Kentucky. Cowens played his collegiate basketball at Florida State University from 1967 to 1970. He is the all-time Florida State leading rebounder with 1,340 rebounds. He was named the Sporting News All-American second team in 1970. His number now hangs in the rafters of the Donald L. Tucker Center. Cowens was selected as the fourth overall pick by the Boston Celtics during the 1970 NBA draft. Largely at during his rookie year, Cowens averaged 17 points per game and 15 rebounds per game. He was named to the NBA All-Rookie First Team and shared the NBA's Rookie of the Year honors with Portland's Jeff Petrie. He also led the league in personal fouls that same year, the recommendation of former Celtics center Bill Russell. Number 9. In the coaching line. He began his coaching career by serving as a player coach for the Boston Celtics during the 1978-79 season, but he quit coaching after the season and returned as a full-time player before retiring in 1980. Cowens coached the Bay State Bombardiers of the Continental Basketball Association in 1984-85. Cowens returned to the NBA coaching ranks as an assistant coach for the San Antonio Spurs in 1994-96 and was considered for the coaching job at the Boston Celtics during the 1995 offseason. He was head coach of the Charlotte Hornets from 1996 to 1999 and was the head coach with the Golden State Warriors from 1999 to 2001, a tenure of 105 games. In 2005-06, Cowens was head coach of the Chicago Sky of the Women's National Basketball Association and also served as an assistant coach of the Detroit Pistons from 2006 to 2009. Number 8. The Junior Year Moving at the start of his junior year, Cowan stood 6'6", six six, and the junior varsity team had a new coach. At the end of his second junior varsity game, Cowens remained in uniform, played three quarters for the varsity squad, and never looked back. During his senior year, Newport took its 29-3 record to the state tournament. That year, Cowens averaged 13 points and 20 rebounds, stats that predicted his future prowess close to the hoop. Although he was sought by nearly every college in the Ohio Valley Conference, Cowens was not actively pursued by Kentucky's Adolph Rupp. Feeling snubbed, Cowens went against the advice of his father, who wanted him to stay in Kentucky and choose Florida State University, a school not known for producing NBA-level talent. Also, FSU's basketball program was on probation at the time for recruiting violations, raising more doubts about Cowens' decision. But Cowens liked Florida State coach Hugh Durham, who promised the prep star a starting spot as a sophomore and made Cowens feel as though his abilities would be put to good use. Number 7. A good rebounder. Cowens definitely could rebound, pulling down 1,340 boards during his three varsity seasons in Tallahassee. He also scored 19 points per game and shot .519 from the floor. In addition, Cowens ran the court meshing perfectly with the Seminoles' fast-breaking offense and helping the team improve from 11-15 to 15 to 18-8 to 8 to 23-3 to 3 during Cowens' senior year when he finished 7th in the nation in rebounding. 
One of the things Cowens did too much in his rookie year with the Celtics was foul other players. He committed a league-high 350 infractions. He would foul out of 90 games by the end of his career, a total that ranks among the top 20 of all time. But he also averaged 17 points and 15.4 rebounds, the most ever by a first-year Celtics player besides Russell. Cowan's achievements earned him a share of the NBA Rookie of the Year honors with Jeff Petrie of the Portland Trailblazers. The Celtics improved to 44 to 38, and Cowan's quickly won accolades for his hustle, mobility, tenacity, and unselfish approach to the game. Number six, versatility. At six foot nine and 230 pounds, Cowan certainly was neither the biggest nor the most overpowering center in the league, particularly when compared to the likes of Lanier, Karim Abdul-Jabbar, and Chamberlain. His versatility and energy were his greatest assets, along with a willingness to sacrifice his own scoring total and his body for the good of the team. Cowens ran baseline to baseline, set picks, made heady passes, participated in full-court presses, blocked seemingly unblockable shots, and dived into the crowd after loose balls, muscled through the paint for tip-ins, and generally made himself a nuisance to Celtics opponents. He once broke his foot in an exhibition game by slamming into a basket support while blocking a shot. Keep yourself tuned in as we discover five more amazing facts with you all. And hope you guys are enjoying the video. And if you've yet not subscribed to the channel, do it now in order to make sure that you don't miss out on any future NBA content from now on. Number five. Name to all defensive second team. The word dynasty was used to describe the Celtics as the team's winning ways continued through the mid-1970s. In 1974 to 75, Boston again reached the 60-win mark in repeating as Atlantic Division champs. Cowens was named to the NBA All-Defensive second team, the first such honor of his career, and his numbers continued to hold strong despite missing 15 games with a broken foot. He averaged 20.4 points and 14.7 rebounds, finishing just behind Wes Unseld of the Washington Bullets for the league's rebounding title. It was Unseld's Bullets who kept the Celtics from repeating as world champions, defeating Boston in six games in the Eastern Conference Finals. Washington went on to suffer a four-game sweep at the hands of the underdog Golden State Warriors and Rick Barry in the NBA Finals. Number 4. Departure of Close Friend and Retirement the 1976 championship marked a peak from which Cowens and the Celtics would continue to slide until the end of the decade. During the off-season, Boston traded the 33-year-old Silas, a close friend of Cowens, to the Denver Nuggets. With Silas's departure, Cowens lost his enthusiasm for the game. At age 28, Cowan said he'd had enough of the NBA. Although the retirement was short-lived, about 30 games, Cowan's never returned to top form. He played four more seasons with the Celtics, posting combined averages of 16.6 points and 11.4 rebounds. As for the team, the aging and ultimate retirement of Havlicek, among other personal changes, caused Boston's win total to slide to 44 in 1976-77, 32 in 77-78, and 29 in 78-79. Number 3. The Return and Final Retirement After a 2-12 start in the 1978-79 season, Cowens became player coach of the weakened Celtics, a role that predecessor Russell had filled at one time. It was a struggle for Cowens. Cowens' 10th and final year with the Celtics, Boston returned to the top of the Atlantic Division by posting a 61-21 record. It was the sixth division title during Cowens' decade with the club for helping the Celtics to a remarkable 32-game improvement. Cowens retired following the 1979-80 season, but not even that second retirement was permanent. After two years away from the NBA, Cowens returned for one last gasp in the 1982-83 season. After the regular season, Cowens called it quits for the third and final time. Number 2. Most Valuable Player he finished his career with 13,516 points, that's 17.6 per game, and 10,444 rebounds, that's 13.6 per game. Cowens appeared in 89 postseason games, averaging 18.9 points and 14.4 rebounds. In six All-Star games, he averaged 12.7 points and 13.5 rebounds. He played on two championship teams and won the NBA Most Valuable Player Award for 1972-73. While Cowan's name doesn't appear near the top of career statistical charts, those who recognize his skills and what they meant to the game elected him to the Hall of Fame in 1991. And number one. Birth in Basketball Hall of Fame 
Dave Cowens earned a berth in the Basketball Hall of Fame because of his tenacity and work ethic as a mainstay of the Boston Celtics in the 1970s. Leading the team to the NBA championships in 74 and 76, playing in the era of Julius Irving, Wilt Chamberlain and Pete Maravich, Cowens didn't possess the flash and glitz of those high-profile superstars. Instead, it was Cowens' consistency, unselfishness, versatility and energy that established him as one of the most solid and respected centers in recent NBA history. His determination helped to resurrect a Celtics dynasty, presumed dead after the departure of legend Bill Russell. Cowens ultimately joined his venerated predecessor in the Hall of Fame, a feat he never dreamed of achieving. Cowens was a player of his own name. We seldom find such players in the basketball history. Who do you think can be the next Dave Cowens? Let us know your answers in the comment section below. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video and thumbs up if you've liked it. And do hit that subscribe button so you won't be missing out on any interesting videos from now on.